Hey up everybody. Okay then I'm moving on to the next part of my micro lathe project. In the last part I were working on this screw screw cutting mechanism for me uh, for me gearing and I did the quadrant in the last part I think. So I've got some associated parts to make for this now some uh, first and second studs, various spacers etc uh, etc. Et so watch this space then and we'll crack on with this. I've just got this temporary setup now with my gears on. I've been trying different variations of gears to make sure this quadrant that I've made is going to work okay. So this is one of the more complicated setups with, with double sets of gears on. Okay, I, I always seem to assume that people know what I'm doing here, that they converse with, with lathes etc and, and some people aren't. So I'll just quickly explain this for anybody that doesn't quite know what, what's going off here. Um, right, so these are the change wheels, right. If you've seen in my previous videos where I've made this arm to fit these change wheels in at various different geometry is the best way of describing it. So what, what's happening here then is the spindle, of the lathe spindle has got to be able to drive so it's got to have a, a fixed gear on that spindle. Then to get different teeth per inch on that chart that I shown you earlier you've got to be able to intermesh different formulations of gearing to get different speeds of the lead screw. So that's got to be a fixed drive, the lead screw's got to be a fixed drive, then these two intermediate you can either have a combination of gears or you can just have one gear onto one gear onto the drive, onto the lead screw. Uh, this is the more complicated one with, with two sets of gears on each. So you can have single gears on. So these two sets of gears, these two have to be joined together. That's if there's a combination. But they also have to be able to spin freely on this stud that they fixed on. So these have got to be able to spin freely. I can't spin them because I haven't made the stud yet. Uh, so that's a fixed gear, that's a fixed gear. These two are free to rotate. So this one's going to rotate this way, which in turn will rotate this combination this way, which in turn will ro rotate this combination this way, which will then in turn rotate the lead screw anti-clockwise and then the lead, the lead screw once it's engaged on the feed or the screw cutting will traverse towards the chuck. On some lathes you get a tumbler reverse uh, I can't quite fit it on this one because I, I've just not got enough room to do everything uh, so you, you move your tumbler reverse up like on a Myford lathe and then that changes the direction of all these gears to send the lead screw that way. So that's just a little bit of an overview there for, for anybody that's not very conversant with lathes. Um, I didn't want to gloss over it for anybody that's not used to it and not quite know what I'm doing. So what I've got to do now then, I've got to make this gear into a fixed drive so I've got to put a bush on this lead screw with a key and then that bush has got to be pinned via a, a shear pin uh, to make that a solid drive on the lead screw. This has got to have a keyway, have a keyway made, well a key I should I say, to key that gear to the, to the spindle and now I've got to make, once I've got them done, I've got to make two studs which will let these gears rotate freely but be joined together. And I'm going to use a keyway to join them together. You could actually, if I've got one here, you could actually just drill pinholes in the gears so that they pinned together. That's another method reason I'm doing that is because all my Myford gears have already got keyways in. 
they've all got this one eighth keyway in. So that's more simpler for me. If you make it, if you've got a set of gears with no keyways in, and you don't want to go to the trouble of putting keyways in, you can just pin them like I said. So what I'm going to do now, then, I'm going to make the first and second stud. I'm calling it an axle, stud axle, uh, to let these gears rotate free, but be joined together by a keyway. In my case. So I've got to make the stud, which will go through the uh, quadrant arm here, and then this flange will clamp up to the quadrant arm with, with a nut on the back. And then on this stud, I'm going to put a bush, which will rotate on this stud with a fixed key in for my gears to slide on. So one and two. Then I'll be fixing this gear to this lead screw and fixing that gear to the spindle. Well like I said I hope that makes sense for anybody that's not very conversant with lathes and lathe work uh, but for anybody that does know about them you know you know all this anyway.
Okay, then I'm ready to give this a try now. Uh, I've got everything made up, I think. So I've got to put my keyway into the spindle to drive that, and that's got to be followed with a spa um, a spacer just to stop that gear from working its way off. I've got my lead screw drive bush on with its pin through and its key on for the gears. I'm going to put the um, quadrant arm on now. So just for starters then I'll put the complicated train on, gear train, for the 72 fine feed. So that's the drive bush onto the first stud, then the 40 gear, and the 25. And that's going to slot into this quadrant with this nut on the back. Then I've got the 45 gear and the 20 gear. This is going to go on an extended stud because it's got a, a double gearing system on this train. And so th this will have to have a spacer on the inside like that. And that's going to go on to this gear, this gear this 45 gear onto this 25 with a nut on the back then it's the 50 tooth onto the lead screw and because this 50 tooth is going to be on the edge of the lead screw I'm putting this spacer on and then the gear just got to tighten that spacer up. Basically all that spacer is doing is stopping the gear from rubbing too much on the face of that one. Then to stop these gears falling off I'm just going to put these stops on. It's just a washer, a big washer and a screw that screws into the lead screw and the studs. So now they're all on I can uh, get everything meshed into where it should go. Now you're supposed to put a little piece of paper in between teeth just to stop them getting too much mesh. Then tighten the banjo up when, when you're happy with the mesh of the gears. Right, I think we're ready for a trial run. I'll just put some power on. Well that seems to be working okay. Yeah I'm quite pleased with that. Now obviously 
when you've got these stuck out like this you don't want to get no clothing or your fingers anywhere near them so I will have to make a guard for this at a later date uh, and I'll also have to make a guard so that it don't splash oil onto the belt look, splashing a bit of oil on well that's it then for change gears and to screw cutting uh, mechanism etc uh, it's turned out okay that I think uh, like I said earlier now these gears are spinning you don't want to be getting your fingers or your clothing anywhere near anything like that so uh, at, a later, at a later date I'll be making a guard for that so let's give it another try yeah I'm happy with that uh, right then uh, I think that's it for this video then so uh, if you found that useful informative interesting etc etc give me a thumbs up and a subscribe I'd appreciate that and I'll catch you on next part to this then I don't know where it's going to be yet but I'll catch you on next part so uh, I'll sign off for now then thanks for watching bye for now